taxes make you feel like an adult, but in a sad way. Hi fellow happy writers, my name is Vivian Reese and I want to help you write, publish, and market your novel. So let's just dive in this week. I'm giving you eight little nuggets of wisdom when it comes to filing taxes as a writer. This is not an all-inclusive list and you should definitely do your own research. This should serve as an introduction to these things, making you aware of what you need to research further on your own. I'm also not diving into whether or not you should create your own company, as that's totally a separate topic. Let me know if that's something you want me to do. I forgot to mention that this is just for the United States only. I don't know any tax um, laws or regulations in other countries, so I'm sorry. This just applies to the United States. All right, number one, you have to report all of your income to the IRS. It does not matter how much you make. You have to report it. They want to know it. They want to know everything about you. <laughs> Keep thorough records of your writing expenses, your earnings, and any and all receipts that you receive. The more organized you are throughout the entire year, the easier it'll be when tax season comes. I go through all of my finances at the beginning of every month, but you decide what's best for you. Number two, deductions. Learn them because it's the only shortcut to keeping some of your money. Um, first, let's define what a deduction is and what it does for you. A deduction is an expense that you can write off on your taxes. Essentially, it lowers your tax liability or how much you owe in taxes. So if you have $1,000 in deductions and you fall into the 25% bracket, you can save $250 of taxes owed. When you file your taxes, you can write off ordinary and necessary business expenses. Some of these include things like office equipment, like maybe a computer or keyboards, even a microphone for dictation, writing softwares. You can do postal fees for things that you may need to mail for your business, marketing costs, publishing costs like cover design, ISBNs, editing. Um, you can even do travel expenses if you're going to writing conferences or your own book signing events. There's a lot that you can deduct. There's no list that you need to refer back to to see if your expense is a is deductible, um, but if you incurred it for your writing specifically, you can deduct it. So in other words, if you wouldn't, um, or if you didn't write, would you have incurred that expense? If the answer is yes, then you cannot write it off. If you wouldn't have incurred it, then it is something that you can write off. Also, you can write off your home office. So the space that you use, if you use it solely for your business or your writing, um, you can calculate the percentage of your home that's used for your office, and you can deduct that percentage from your mortgage, um, your utilities, things like that. If you use something like TurboTax, like I currently do, even though I don't know if that's going to be something I'm going to do this year, it will walk you through all of those steps. Drop a comment down below on something that surprised you come tax season, good or bad. <laughs> We can all learn from each other's experiences here and use the hashtag happy writer in the next 24 hours to be entered to win a website audit by yours truly. This is something brand new that I'm doing. So comment and use that hashtag. Winner will be selected tomorrow, January 17th. It's a new promotion I'm trying to step just for my viewers. And if all goes well, this might become a regular part of each one of my videos. Number three, following that, I'm going to address the ugly elephant in the room. Elephants are cute. I don't know where that came from. This goes without saying, but I'm gonna say it anyway. Do not lie. If you're ever audited, you will be in a world of hurt and fees and all kinds of money issues. <laughs> Do not purchase things not used in your business and write it off. It's dishonest and it's wrong and it's called tax evasion. We all have to pay taxes. So don't cheat the system because you end up cheating all of the rest of us too. So just don't do it. Number four, hobby versus profession. If your writing is a hobby and something you don't ever want to transition to professionally, there's actually different rules for filing and it has to do with the deductions that we were just talking about. If your writing is a hobby, so something that you don't do specifically for income, and if your deductions are more than your income for the year, the rest of those deductions cannot affect your other sources of income. Hold on, what? Let's back up for a second and let me give you an example. 
If your writing is a hobby and you earn, say, $1,500, but you had $2,000 in expenses, you cannot roll that extra $500 into your other income. It counts as a $500 personal loss. My voice is breaking a little bit. But if your writing is considered a profession for you, even if you're not doing it full time, you can apply that $500 deduction to your other income sources. Using our earlier example, if you're in the 25% pay bracket, you would end up paying $125 less for your taxes for your other income. So if you have a day job, the $500 deduction can be applied to that income. So there's a little bit of a difference there. Also worth noting, and I can't remember specifically off the top of my head, I don't know why I didn't um, put it in here to include, but if you have, if it's your profession and you have so many years of not earning any positive income, so if your deductions are always more than what you made, the IRS does not like to see that. So, and they might audit you, they might flag you for an audit if that continues to happen. So another reason to be honest <laughs> and um, another thing you should look into if you think that you might not be earning as much or maybe you should cut back on some expenses or things like that. I know for sure there's a rule like that for businesses, like if you own an LLC, but I did read it somewhere that it applies to general taxes as well. Number five, self-employment tax. This one bites. As a self-employed individual, you are now the employer and the employee, which means you cover both portions of the tax taken for social security and Medicare. Usually your employer covers the other half, like if you have a day job, but now you're responsible for it. So if you earn over $400 from your writing or your business and you haven't paid for social security or Medicare out of it, i.e. that it was paid for by a business um, or yourself, then you have to pay self-employment taxes. This is at 15.3% of what you earn right now. However, you can deduct the employer portion when determining how much you owe. This is on the Schedule SE form. So multiply your net profit for the year by 92.35% to find the amount of money you'll pay 15.3% taxes on. I know that sounds confusing. For example, if you earned $50,000 in your writing business, $46,175 of that will be taxed at 15.3%, which comes to just over $7,000 in self-employment taxes. It sounds confusing, but that little like 92.35% adjustment is for the employer portion. So they give you a break <laughs> for the employer portion. Number six, self-employed taxes are separate from income taxes. I'm in Florida, so I only pay federal income taxes and I don't pay state income taxes. So keep that in mind here. The general rule still applies though that um, you'll have to pay each tax separately. It's not lumped into the self-employment portion, but you can deduct half of what you paid in self-employed taxes from your federal income tax. This may also apply to your state income tax, but I'm not sure, so just do your own research. Like I said, it, it doesn't apply to me. So from our previous example, we paid about $7,000 in taxes. You can now subtract 3,500 from your taxable income. If you're in the 25% tax bracket, this saves about $875 in taxes. Whoa. So this is another little break that you get being self-employed. Number seven, qualified business income deduction. This is a new one to 2018 and allows certain trades or businesses to receive a 20% deduction on their business income, which is huge. Definitely research the rules on this one to make sure it applies to you. But in general, if you own a business like a publishing company that you are um, or that you write through and you make under a certain amount of money, you qualify for this deduction. Since this is a brand new thing, research, research, research. I haven't gone through this deduction yet um, or for this tax season. So since it's so new, it's still a little vague. The rules are a little weird. I'm unfamiliar with it. My guess is after tax season, there's gonna be a lot more information available about it. But at the moment, it's a little hazy as, how it, as to how it applies to writers. I hate to leave you with such a vague description for this one, but at least now you know that you're aware of, at least now you know that you're aware, at least now you, at least now you're aware of its existence. <laughs> Words. It is a huge one and I'm kind of excited to see how it plays out. That's why I might do TurboTax again, just, just so I'm, just so I'm totally clear. And number eight, estimated quarterly taxes. 
you should pay estimated quarterly taxes once your projected tax payment for the year exceeds $1,000. Um, if you own a corporation, that number is $500, so it's lower. The tricky thing about this is that you're paying estimated taxes for each quarter. This is difficult to do when you're an author or um, actually a lot of other entre entrepreneurs as you don't know what your income is going to be. It's not a steady income. So if your income fluctuates throughout the year, you'll have to actually recalculate your estimated taxes each quarter. Otherwise, they being the IRS <laughs> likes you to pay equal amounts throughout the year. Um, so each quarter they want an equal amount, but that's obviously hard for you to do if it fluctuates. So say, so you have to pay it quarterly, like I said. So say in quarter one, you only end up having to pay um, like $800 in taxes. And, but then quarter two, you end up paying like $5,000 in taxes. They like it to be an even number, but obviously you're not going to know that. So you are going to have to recalculate it every single quarter. At the end of the quarter, you have to recalculate it and pay your taxes. Why do you have to do this? All of this is to avoid paying a penalty for underpayment. Um, which I don't like how that's phrased, but essentially it's the interest on whatever taxes you would have owed. That's your penalty. But for the 2018 tax year, the, the interest that I found was about 2.66%. You don't have to pay estimated quarterly taxes. This year, if you owed no taxes last year, you were a resident and um, your prior tax year covered a 12 month period. It's like a random weird rule for me. So. If you work another job that withheld enough money last year that you don't owe any on your business, then you're good for this one for this year. So if you owed anything last year and you know this year you're going to go over the $1,000 to pay in taxes, then you need to pay estimated quarterly taxes. I hope that's not confusing. Um, like I said, just research. <laughs> if you do owe estimated taxes, or you would like to pay them so that you don't eat the penalty the next year, the due date for the first quarter, which um, starts at the beginning of the year, so the 1st of January to the 31st of March, the deadline is April 18th to file your quarterly taxes. So not only do you have to pay taxes with everybody else, now you also gotta do it every three months. Yay. All right, that's all I have for you today. I hope you found this content helpful. Seriously, I hope it helped you. Let me know if you have any other nuggets that you would like to share with everyone else on in the comments. If you're a writer, if you've gone through this, taxes can be very confusing. So any help you're able to give somebody else is always a bonus. And don't forget to use the hashtag happy writer to be entered for an author website audit. Winner will be chosen tomorrow, January 17th. Also, I'll be filming a frequently asked questions video soon on outlining and brainstorming. So if you have a question that you would like for me to answer um, on brainstorming or outlining, you can tweet me with the hashtag ask Vivian, or you can add a comment to my YouTube community post, which I will link down below. So not a comment on this video, but the post just so I can keep it all together. Subscribe to this channel because I post new writing videos every Wednesday. And, um, I'd appreciate it so much if you gave this video a thumbs up because it does help support my channel and you guys are amazing. And I love each little thumbs up that I get. Um, you can also check out my brand new course, Dreamer to Doer, which launched launched just last month. This course is all about the first steps to finishing and publishing your novel. So making the time, having the focus and the motivation to write your book. That link um, to the product page is down below and it's also in the information cards up above. I'll see you next week when I'll be giving you my favorite writing resources. That's software, websites, books, my top favorites. Um, and also I'll be popping in for a bonus video on the writing resolutions, um, writing reflect, wait, reflections and resolutions tag. <laughs> That's what it is. All right. Until then, happy writing. Bye guys.